Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. This is Omnidog from Omnidog's Vault. Thank you for tuning in and watching the show where I have as my guest, everybody's favorite Welshman, Ugly McGregor, also known as Lewis McGregor. Lewis, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Jess, on this typically cold Welsh day. <laughs> ah, okay. And uh, we have as our topic, which we will get to in a moment, uh, what happens when you have a reading drought or you've hit a you've hit the wall, you've hit a bump in the road, you've you don't feel like reading anymore. Um, what do you do when that happens? So we'll be talking about that. Um, first, let me ask you, uh, where are you in your collected reading, in your collected editions? What's your collection like right now? Well, <laughs> as, as many know in the group, I tend to purge my collection quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm five books deep at the moment. Um, but you have only I'm, five books. Only five books. I've got the two Savage Conan books, um, Spider Man, the Craven, uh, the Hunt for Craven, Craven's Last Hunt. I don't even know what I've got. What? Um, <laughs> uh, the Spider Man graphics novels and the Two Miles Omnis. Uh, not this isn't counting manga. My manga collection is significantly a lot larger still. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we're counting One Piece, that's we're over a hundred volumes. Yeah. Oh, so you you have more manga than anything? Oh, else. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of been like that since since twenty eighteen, I would say. Um, but yeah, no, I I just uh, I've just purged completely this summer, um, and I decided to just if if. Like I, I know you love to make jokes about it, about my selling, but um, <laughs> I think I think if I find that I have no interest in having that book anymore, uh, it'll be gone. So I like to work in kind of like a cycle system um, with my books. So it's more an in and out system, more so than a build up of a collection. And I think that once you because with the two Savage Conans, for example, they're both out of print. I know a lot of people in the group have been searching for volume one and this volume one's the dm so it can get to the point where it's uh it's that the the hobby pays for itself mm. so yeah okay. i have no interest into building the collection that i once had but i would like to keep it as more of a a cycle mm -hmm. maybe how many can that shelf hold maybe 15 might be the maximum i'll go on for from from now on and um and yeah so um, do you have uh w which set is is oh it's a it's savage sword of conan you've got two of yes yes, yes well, volume one and two those are really good books i've yet to dip into them um it was it was a little bit of a an impulse purchase really mm -hmm. um, well, but those are good i remember reading them as a teenager <laughs> back in the day and they are significantly more violent uh and uh, sexier than the regular comic. They were sold as a magazine, so they could do whatever they want. They're also in black and white, but I, they are, uh, um, if it's possible, I, I feel they're even better than the regular comic book, as great as the regular comic book is. Those Savage Swords, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you enjoy them so much, you really want to hang on to them. Yeah, I mean, when I was, because I think it was in the summer of 2018 and I was reading the Dark Horse material and um, it was kind of a, it become a morning ritual of going out into the backyard when it's sunny and um, just reading a few issues. And I really enjoyed that practice and just the character. And I know that the character from these magazines aren't necessarily the same from what I've read in the Dark Horse books. Uh, but I wanted to sort of dip back into that world and uh from my research, like what you've just said, these were the more adult orientated books than the uh, the original uh, comics. So yeah, I am looking forward to getting into it. I might carry on with my uh, Miles books first. Mm -hmm. um, cause they are just incredibly enjoyable. And then I'll get into Conan when the time is right. Well, you've, um, you and I 
uh, go back a long way to the first days of the uh, Omnibus Collector page, but it was our budget videos, how to stay on a budget, and then we had a follow up to it um, that I think made the most impact on me because I realized at the time that I wasn't staying within budget. And then I have also recently started purging anything that I've either re read and don't want to keep forever or books that I just am not going to get into that I, that I know I'm not going to be interested in. Um, like uh, the first two Avengers omnibus from the old days. I'm not, I, I look at them and I just wasn't going to read them. I, I, that it, and uh, I think it was those, the the sort of budget videos and the purge idea really stuck with me um, be, uh, to sort of curate my collection. And Taylor Brown and I did a video on how to curate your collection. And um, so I, I started to do a pretty much year long purge and curation where I got rid of an awful lot of Omnis and maybe hardcovers and things like that, that I just knew I was never going to go back to, or they didn't really interest me at all. And I think that's important for everyone to do. You've, you've obviously done it to the point where you're comfortable with it. Um, and everybody can do what they're comfortable with, but um, I, I do think it's important for everybody to take a look at their collection and uh, go through it from time to time and just say, be honest with themselves. Am I going to read this and, or do I want to keep this? Mm -hmm. I think um, one, one of the biggest factors for myself that held me back a lot of the time is, um, and it was uh, Sherlock shared this meme on his Facebook page, uh, maybe last year, during the last year. And it was about how, um, you don't need all of the books, all of the the merchandise, all of the comics, all of the statues, whatever it may be, to be a, a fan of that material. Um, and that really stuck with me because I think, especially within this hobby, uh, it's sort of a foundation that the more you have, the more you can say that you're a fan mm. of that subject or that character the team whatever it may be um, and i think ultimately that really gets uh where the trouble may start arising yeah. um so for myself when um i was able to sell the first book i ever purchased i think it was back in way back when um when i got into the hobby it was the standard sized hardcover of daredevil yellow and like my one kind of like rule was like you were to never to sell this because that was the first comic that you ever purchased um but once i got rid of that everything else was kind of like off the table um that can go this can go mm. uh, and i would I'd, like to be honest man it was, it was one of the like the most healthiest decisions i've ever made um to kind of just know that like if something comes in um i'm not gonna have to struggle with getting rid of it like I'm enjoying the uh, Miles Morales uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus so much right now, um, and it's it's one of the funnest books I've I've read, well, ever. It, you know, yeah. it's going to be in, in in the top five. But if in two to three months um, I have my eye on a fancy lens and I don't want to wait for my wages to come in, and I thought, you know what, that extra hundred quid will go towards the lens it'll go it, it doesn't take away from the fact that i've enjoyed that book um and i've i've, I've read that material i know the storyline um so yeah to, it gets to a point it's just cash sitting on your shelf right you and i t uh going back to the other two uh videos and this video we talk a lot about the psychological factors in collecting uh where people's minds are and how they collect, what they collect, what their what their mindset is. As you said, you don't um, have to collect everything to be a fan. Um, 
and my pro my I will admit my problem is, and it's it's a big problem that I'm trying to keep under control is that I see a lot of stuff I want to read and I want to have it like in the chat, the admin chat, oh, 10 days ago or so you, you put up that uh, graphic novel collection of Spider-Man. And I was like, that's so beautiful. I want it. <laughs> I must have it because I remember all those graphic novels and I didn't have them in any form. And <clears throat> it was a really hard book to find because of the name, yeah, it wasn't expensive, yeah. but it was named very oddly. Um, and I was just, I have, I really want to read that. And I just want to read so much. And, and Tyler Blunt asked me the other day, real question, do you ever think you're going to get to everything? And I had to answer him honestly at my age, no, I really don't. I it's gonna be impossible, really, to read everything. Um, that's not me gonna stop me from buying things, but uh, I, and I read at a good pace. I read two or three things every day, <clears throat> even at that speed. I'm not gonna catch up. Yeah, ever. It, well, since now I've I've been acquiring a few new books, um, you know, th there is that element of that uh, that dopamine hit that just it doesn't go away. It's so nice when you get that new package, yeah. Um, especially when you take the cellophane off and there's that new book smell. <laughs> it's hard to ever replace. It. Although I will say, uh, funny enough, uh, before we get, go on to the main topic um, of the video, is that um, the Conan omnibuses and the um the spider-man graphic novels and um, they both arrived with a little bit of damage i think a lot of people in the group would have kind of been miffed at it and i think my old self would have been uh quite displaced that the the ding it was quite a significant ding on the conan book uh with the um the spider-man graphic novels it was kind of turned in on one of the corners um but what i noticed is now i've left that mentality of like the collectible material mm. and instead i'm happy to get rid of them in two months three months if that's going to be the case to then acquire something else uh that damage made absolutely I, I had no care for it it was fine i looked at it it went onto the shelf whereas i know back in the day that would have been a really big issue so that was just it was interesting to note that i didn't mind it whereas it was usually a, a big thing i th i think the aussies like mitch and sherlock um really sort of laugh at the complaints that the group that the uh, Facebook group has at the what we consider damage because things that arrive in Australia yeah. after having crossed half the world uh, are always beat up they you know Mitch is just happy to find a couple of trades even if the uh, back covers ripped ha a half off he's like oh I found this trade this is great now I can read it they they're much more used to to they I, I think they just have, have accepted that their books are going to be damaged when they get them and they're just happy to have the reading material um so <laughs> I, I i think they probably sort of give a wry smile to all the damages that we think yeah. we get you know like a corner is a little bit bent and somebody sends it back Whereas they would be like, this book's a 10 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, and we have some things in the chat. Let's see. Uh, we have actually, uh, there's Ben Uncles and Zach. What's up? Marcelo Ramos, Jesse Say What was first as usual. Good to see you. Um, and Matthew, oh, it's Matthew Mongi. I haven't talked to him in a while. He has a three year backlog. That's better than my 15 year backlog. I don't um, I don't know that I'm ever gonna catch up with it. Billy Nays obviously doesn't know you well. Uh, Lewis sounds like such a gentleman. Um, come on, Lewis, I made a joke. All right. <laughs> <He's up. laughs> Sorry, I was catching up on reading too. Oh, all right. Um, Marcelo Ramos, I've tried to stay away from Conan as good as it might be. I can't risk getting into it. Too many books. But that's true. If you're a diehard Conan fan, there's a lot to 
read. Um, Matthew says, I like the in and out methodology. I have some books I know I'll never read again, and I plan to sell them once I fill my designated shelf space. Haven't hit that limit yet, but I bet I will in a year. And Comic Bound makes a good, uh, I like your logo, Comic Bound. One thing that will force me to purge soon is space. These books take up a lot of room. That is why I purge too. Um, I just went through a purge last week because I have run out of room. And it's uh, short of buying another house. I am not going to have another option. Um, <laughs> Omar, yeah, I have been on uh, a lot this week. My my wife actually, for the first time, said something about it. She was like, hey, how about a little me time? And I was like, uh, okay, sweetie, this is the last show for a while. She definitely said something to me. Um, Daniel, you're right. Problem is buying epics and omnis and then end up double dipping. Double dipping is a problem uh, for me too. I, I get that. Um, but if you are, um, say you're, you're going along and you've been reading uh, several books a week and you sort of hit a wall, you, um, you get to the point, you hit a spot where you just don't feel like reading anymore. Um, you're like, and it, it's happened to me. I think sometime this year, I just sort of got burnt out and I said, I'm not into it right now. I just don't feel like reading. I'd rather do something else. And again, this goes to the psychological thing that you and I talk about. Um, what do you what do you do when that feeling takes over? When uh, you're just not interested in your books, and you sometimes sometimes you feel like I'll get back to it. Other times you feel like I don't know if I'll ever get back to it. What do I do with these books? So, what um, what do you do um, if you uh, hit a reading drought? Um, I think I think the first thing is to acknowledge that you know you're in one uh, because the more you try to force it, uh, the less enjoyable the whole practice of of this hobby becomes of of reading. Uh, I think for myself it happened in um, kind of I think it was the middle of June and um, I, I, I like it, it just kind of came out of nowhere because I was heavily invested into quite a lot of series at the time. I think I had just finished on the Marvel side, um, Mac Wade's Doctor Strange. Mm. Um, then I was reading uh, a ton of DC and I just picked up the Jonah Hex Omnibus, which I was heavily advocating in the group. Uh, it was a really good book. Um, really enjoyed just the because i'm more of a fan of the uh which is why I'll, i'm probably going to enjoy these conan books i'm more of a fan of kind of the uh the episodic format of storytelling where it's not a six issue continuous act but each issue just tells its own little thing in its own corner uh and and the jonah hex on the bus was like that carried a little bit of narrative threads really enjoyed what it was um and one day i put it down and i didn't pick it back up uh, then I didn't pick anything else back up. That went on for months. Uh, decided just to get rid of all those books because of what we just talked about. There was no point in having them. I wasn't going to read them. Uh, and it got to the point where I was comicless. I didn't have a single thing that I've had in my possession um, for over 15 years. Like somewhere in my room, there's always been some format of a graphic novel. And I thought I was completely done with not only the format but the hobby itself uh because i just had no interest um and i think one of the most important aspects to consider if you are in a reading funk because we always see it in the group when people make a post about that they're um they're struggling with their series or they just can't pick up a book um is not to push it uh, because the moment that this 
becomes strenuous, it becomes tedious, and is a task to get through, uh, there's no point in doing it because you're supposed to, it's supposed to be a form of escapism and to relax outside of your, your daily job. And you don't want to make this a job in itself. But the issue is, uh, as you mentioned earlier, when you inherently have so much, I guess you can look at it as a chore rather than it being um, a little bit of, of fun. Uh, so, yeah, so I think one of the first things is to acknowledge that you're in the drought and don't try to push forward because uh, you're only going to make things worse. Um, and I, uh, speaking of the psychological aspect, I think it's interesting how some people, uh, I know I suffer from depression and I take medication for it. And I know other people in the comic book world also have depression. Now, when I get my periods of depression, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to read. I don't want to watch TV. I don't want to engage with the world. A lot of people that I know that have depression specifically want comic books to get them out of the depression because it helps them uh, snap out of the depression by, uh, as you said, that form of escapism and reading comic books brings the joy back in their life and it helps them snap out of it. I, I'm the exact opposite. When I get hit with something like that, I, I don't want to read at all. So I'm kind of jealous of the people that can read and because that's when I have my reading droughts is if I get depressed. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't read for a couple weeks. Um, I always feel like I'm always going to go back to the hobby. Um, but it's, you know, my illness that um, keeps me from enjoying it. I, but I think it's important what you said to not push it. If you hit a reading drought, if you're in a, if you hit the reading funk, like Omar just said right here or you have a series that just isn't working for you but you try to dredge through it so to get to the next series um some some books with um i feel like if they have several like three or four or five volumes in it some people say it takes volume two before the thing really gets going so you sort of have to push through volume one but if you if you're not digging a book like uh the cosmic the five book cosmic uh, marvel thing uh, annihilation annihilation conquest war of kings after the war of kings before whatever those five books are i, I had a dead spot in there it's when dark hawk took over about a, towards the latter part of the third book and it was just not working for me. When I read that Dark Hawk part, I was just like, I am not interested in this anymore. And the, I had been looking forward to those five Omnis for so long to read the whole epic cosmic drama. And I just stopped. I um, It was not fun to read at that point. Yeah. And, and I just stopped and I ended up selling the books. Um, so I think it's important to know when uh, to push yourself through a book if you've heard there it gets better or to not push yourself if you just if you've just had it with a book. Yeah, because I think that would be another factor that initiates a drought or a funk where you just you're reading for the sake of reading uh to be part of a community or or because you've invested money in, into these books um and i think with so many options available so many formats from all the publishers um it does start to become um not necessarily uh how, how can I just word it like a, a job to uh to a degree that um you know you look you're looking for a return on the investment that you've made um and I think the 
more that you try to push through something that you're not necessarily enjoying, uh, the more it's just going to create this kind of void where um, you're not enjoying the hobby anymore. Right. Yeah. You. You. I. I love this hobby. It's been my hobby for my entire life, really. But I hit. Uh, I hit a drought. The longest drought was in 1977 before any of you were born. <laughs> um, I, uh, it was before I went to college and I remember reading justice league bronze age floppy issue. Um, and I, it all of a sudden struck me. I said, what am I doing? I am not, these are not any good. I'm not into this. This is not, sparking me at all and i didn't come back again until 1985 with dark knight returns so that was an eight-year drought you throw in college i wouldn't have had time to read any comic books back then anyway yeah but um i wasn't interested at all uh but it did take dark knight returns and watchmen to bring me back in in 1985 and um let's see we have a couple of comments taylor brown has a good uh, point I vary it up and read novels as well as comics to keep both fresh. Add in video games and TV watching too. I've been reading comics consistently for six years now, and this has helped me. Now, back in my day, <laughs> we didn't have video games or Netflix, and comics was it. So you guys are incredibly lucky that there's so much out there to... Uh, if you're burnt out on one thing, if you're burnt out on video games, you can go to comic books or action figures or whatever. There's so much stuff to choose from now to keep your mind entertained. It's really sort of a golden age of the uh, pop culture hobby, I feel mm -hmm. like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always been a big gamer since I was a kid, so that's always been uh, such a, a massive part of my... Um, uh, hobby enjoyment anyway um but yeah that pretty much become the primary source of the hobby uh of of my um uh, free time uh during the summer and so forth uh but it, it, it was usually i might read a few issues of some, something in the morning uh then jump onto the game in the night but it was just a case of not being able to do that at all this year it was just that I was just completely and wholly done with it. I, I don't necessarily know why, but yeah, that, that drought was a, a long and dry one. Um, yeah, you do you do play a lot of all online uh, games, right? Where you, um, uh, I, I don't know, what, what's, what's your favorite game right now that you're playing? Oh, dude. <laughs> Are you playing several at once? Uh, yeah, I've been, um, I've actually been playing a game that I think you would probably be, uh, pretty, you would like, it. it's called Spirit Fearer. And, um, it's, uh, you play like, uh, kind of like a, a, a variation of the Grim Reaper, um, where you take animals to the afterlife. Um, and you've got like, a your very, uh, your fairy where you have the souls of the animals on and you basically just nurture for them and like they might have requests um for like the specific food they want and like you upgrade their lodge and you basically just hang with them until they reach their final journey um and then you take them through the gates and yeah it's really kind of um it's like a it, it's, it's it's like animal crossing in the sense there's a lot of micromanagement um, uh -huh. in terms of food and um and uh, craftables and stuff uh, but i'm playing that it's really sweet uh, it's called Spirit Fairy. Uh, Spirit Fairer, and it's on the Switch. I know you have a Switch, so it sounds like a good game for my daughter and and me to play. So, I, I'm not picking up on what the second word is. Fairer. Fairer. Um, Spell so, it. <laughs> Your uh, accent is. is um, there you go. I just typed it. <laughs> ah, okay. Spirit Fairer. Okay. Okay. I get it. Um, that, I think that's interesting because your other online gaming is you killing lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're saving the souls of animals. That is so sweet. Yeah, no, I um I used to play uh, a game often with Kong, one of yeah. the prominent members in the group. And um, 
but he, he ditched me. His PC could no longer handle the game. So he says, Kong, if you're watching. Um, but yeah, so not so much online gaming at the moment. It's just oh, okay. single player stuff. Uh, I am going to order Spirit Fair for both myself and my daughter then right after this. This sounds like a perfect Christmas gift. Um, I, I, I'm really excited about that because my daughter and I have both hit the hit the end of the um, Animal Crossing game. We it it was great for the quarantine summer, um, but I, I, my daughter's even further along than I am. But I and I just got the ability to terraform and do a bunch oh. of other stuff, so I might start doing that. Because her island is so cool that I, I kind of want to do that. It's it's funny that you say that because um, I like the majority of the world also played the game during uh, quarantine, and and you know the initial pandemic phases, and um, what I found with that game is once you reach the terraforming part where you think you know you're gonna adjust and customize all your island. It, start, it starts to become a little bit tedious and boring because you're no longer working towards a goal set by, uh, what's his name, Tom Nook. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's funny that you say that you feel that you've like hit the end of it at that part because that's where I, I, I was no longer logging on each morning. Um, yeah, it just didn't didn't seem fulfilling anymore once you had kind of completed it. Uh, so yeah. But I, I don't have my Switch anymore, so I can't even go back to it if I wanted to. Oh, what are you playing Spiritfarer on? Uh, it's also on the PlayStation. So oh, okay. PlayStation. Well, she has the PlayStation also. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I, I didn't even bother to buy uh, turnips today. I just Sunday, oh, I used yeah. to wake up and just go, ah, I got to get downstairs. And I hurry downstairs to buy turnips from her. And yeah. that that drip on her nose really grossed me out. And then my daughter told me you could buy a drip that you could install on your face. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, it was a little bit gross. <laughs> Here is a compliment for you from uh, Tilar Blunt. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I can't stand for this kind of fake news and lies this channel is putting out. It clearly says ugly McGregor, but he's actually quite beautiful. Tila, got a bit of a man crush on you. Oh, God, Tyler. <laughs> uh, this is a great topic for discussion. I had a feeling there were loads of us out there that go through this kind of bad spell with reading, but no one ever really talks about it. That's good. Thank you, Comic Bound. I'm, I'm glad that we uh, hit something that you're um, interested in. Uh, the Collector, this is what I like to do. Pose my figures. I love doing that on Saturday nights. Um, this is true. I had Pong. That's all I had was my Magnavox Odyssey, and we played Pong on it. And that was the only game that uh, you could play on that. Uh, here's a good question. A good question from Alex Reads Comics. Any runs you started not liking but ended up loving? Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to think about that one. Hmm. I, I am quite ruthless in the sense of if I don't like something initially, I'll just kind of drop off it. I'm just trying to think. Um, oh, oh, actually, I've got the perfect example, but it's a manga. I know it's not your That's thing. Fine. That's uh, fine. Uh, yeah, but with, with One Piece... Um, uh, Kong was trying to get me into One Piece for for so long, um, and I finally bit the bullet and I bought the first um, box set. And um, that I think it was like from book one up until like kind of book two ish or book three. I think reading those three volumes took maybe four to five months. And you obviously know how small the manga books are. You can do them in a day. Yeah. Um, but it was a case of like a few chapters here and there. And then it got to a certain point where um, it was just a tsunami of chapter after chapter after chapter because it was just so enjoyable. So, yeah. And that would be one of my favorite series and runs of all time. So, I'm sort of jealous of you because that's excitement to me when you 
when you're in there's chapter and chapter where you're just ripping through them because you're enjoying them so much. I mean, that's the fun of the hobby. And when you well, so I, that. I've how many have I got on my shelf? I've got 93 volumes at the moment, and I think it's solicited up to 99 um, on Amazon. Um, but uh, one thing that I like to do, um, <laughs> you, you're either going to find this completely strange or get it, uh, but I don't want to read it all, uh, even though I have it all there. Um, what I like to do is I separate the arcs um, between like seasons. So I'll read, because uh, each arc is kind of round about uh, five to six volumes. So um, every season I'll get through another arc. So it's not as if I'm, because I enjoy it so much, I don't want it to end. You don't want uh, it to be over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, basically every season I'll start a new arc and um, leave it for a while and what i like is because the characters are they are pirates um you know you kind of get stuff you're thinking like what are they doing at the moment what adventures are they getting on and yes i find it a much more fulfilling way to read uh by by leaving that gap uh, but then saying that because of the drought i went in during the summer i haven't touched it for about six seven months now so i guess i'll be doing that over the holidays uh do you feel like you'll be able to pick it right back up and remember everything that you had read Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, the way that the stories are presented is um, each arc is just um, like, I wouldn't necessarily say that um, a brand new reader could start on an arc and fully get everything. But I guess to some extent you kind of could, although I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, it'll be fine. And I think the next arc is only four volumes, so it's not going to be to extend yourself if I have forgot stuff. Mm. Well, of course, my problem is I only have the retention for about a week of what I've read. That's um, so I with Jonathan Hickman stuff, I couldn't stop and take a break because it was so complex. I'd forget it all, mm. especially Avengers and Fantastic Four. Um, I had to keep reading it was super enjoyable, but I had to keep reading or I was going to forget the storyline completely. Um, <laughs> which I, everybody pokes fun at me at, and rightly so that I don't have a good memory for comics that I read. Um, which is why when I read something, I have to do a review if I'm going to like within a day or I'm not going to remember what I've read. So, uh, yet I can remember every single thing I did with my best friend back in high school. I can't remember what I, the Green Lantern I just read from last week. Uh, strange. No, I think I think that's pretty common. If I'm honest, I'm not too sure why either. Maybe it's because the the volume of the content isn't necessarily that long. Um, I imagine it might be easier to remember the events of a two and a half an hour movie than a 25 minute soap opera episode. Hmm. Okay. I have no founding principle in that. That's just me going on the one. Well, I I actually take that as uh, the truth, and I'm going to accept it. Okay. <laughs> it makes me feel better about myself. Um, the, the book I didn't really care for, but on the second read, I really loved to follow up on Alex's question, uh, was White Knight by uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. Um, I read it the first time and thought, this is interesting, but I don't know that it's that great. And then the second time I read it, I really, really enjoyed it, which helped me really enjoy Curse of the White Knight, or I think that I think it's called Curse of the White Knight, yeah. Um, uh, and Taylor and I reviewed, I think we reviewed both books on uh, our channel. Um, but yeah, White Knight is something I enjoyed a lot more on the second read, whereas I didn't really care for it all that much, the first read. Um, Tilar Bloom says, for, my, for me, my hobby cycled drastically about once a quarter between video games, comics, anime, and filming. I get very obsessive over whatever I am in and primarily focus only on one of them at a time. I can attest to that. I've, I'm good friends with Tyler, and I sort of have seen he, he definitely 
focuses hard on those particular video games and comics whenever they come out. Um, and and uh, I, I bought a bunch of Gru uh, uh, that Tyler and I were going to read. Uh, and I think he's forgotten about it already because he's moved on. But I have a bunch of Gru that Tyler and I were supposed to read together. I may have to read it myself now. I, I don't know where we are. We were going to get them custom bound and everything. Nightmare. Needs to be booted that guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, here this is typical. What? I terraformed my entire island and made it into a lavish paradise. Back in June, at least. Then I stopped after hundreds of hours. Exactly, Tyler. Uh, don't buy Cyberpunk on PS4 yet. It's a mess. What? Um, I don't... I'm not active in the uh, video game group, but I do uh, subscribe to it. So I see the feed all the time, and that's what everybody's talking about. What is so great about cyber cyberpunk that everybody's so into it? Yeah. So, um, well, it's a mix at the moment, as as Joe has just said. Um, so essentially, what has happened? Uh, this game has been highly anticipated, not only for this year but for years. They first announced it. In 2012 you had a trailer in 2013 um and then over the last few years you've got more uh prominent trailers longer trailers uh keanu reeves is in the game he's a character um so it's been like a really kind of uh built up thing and as i posted in the group earlier in the week uh or late last week uh the reviews started to come out and um they were all like the the aggregate score was 91 out of 100 which is universal acclaim um but then you started to see little bits and snippets uh about that all the reviews were only from pc and they didn't actually give anybody any console codes to review wow. um, so you couldn't review it on the xbox or the playstation 4 or the playstation 5 it was only pc only additionally um you could only really show footage that they sent to you so that was sort of a little bit uh conspicuous so anyway um the game has been released and it as as joe has mentioned it is uh abysmal with uh bugs um glitches uh errors um i've actually earlier today i i contacted playstation support for um a refund because uh, as uh noted in the group in one of the threads i posted up a, a photo of my error history um and it's just all crash after crash after crash oh, wow. so um with people like ryan because ryan's playing on um uh, a completely high-end pc he's going to be getting the the best results from the game um that uh that what all the high scores have come from but in regards to the console uh yes yeah, it's, it's it's not good it's uh a lot of people are unhappy about it, uh, and they've been they've been waiting years and years and years for it, and this is just a super huge disappointment. Yeah, um, it's it's weird though because it's not as if the game is bad. Like the game, uh, how could I describe it? It's not as if the the story and kind of the characters and the world building is bad. It's and and like on PC, it's perfect. Uh, well, there are some issues on PC, but to, to an extent, it's really really good on PC. It's just when it crosses over onto the consoles, uh, a lot of people are having really uh, poor issues with it. Ah, okay. Well, that's a that's a, a uh, that's a mind blower. Then that it's such, so such a mess. Uh, I I knew nothing about it. Mm. Um, so if you have um, if you hit your drought, um, you suggest to not force it. So how do you? that that's a way to um sort of arrest it uh not force it how do we get back into books after uh, our drought do we do you think you just need to let it happen naturally and... oh, yeah yeah okay uh, i would say that 100 um 
I would say the one thing once you enter the drought, just don't don't bother pushing it. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, oh, sorry, I just muted my mic. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier with the Miles books, uh, that was just from playing the uh, Spider-Man game. Uh, and I thought, you know what, I might just buy the Omni. And uh, I got back into it naturally like that. Uh, but as as I noted that I thought I had no intention to ever kind of get into the hobby again. Mm. Um, so I just think it is, don't put a date to it. Don't put a month to it. Just wait until you feel like, do you know what, I'm going to read that book. Um, and I think once it happens naturally, it'll be an organic process to sort of fulfill yourself again. And so just fill your life with whatever else you're interested in and um, pick it back up when you're ready to pick it back up. Yes, yes. Um, I think that's perfect. Um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Omar asks, have you ever bought a whole series in trades and then ended up giving up and selling it after the first or second trade? What series? Well, you heard me talk about the Cosmic, Marvel Cosmic, how I dumped the all five Omnis when I hit the Darkhawk part in the middle of the third Omni. Um, I can tell you which one I have, eBay complete. Let me search my emails. <laughs> Um, when was this? Okay, right. Spider-Man, eBay. What what would be the keyword? Volumes. Uh, I have no idea, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking for? It was a Spider-Man series. It was six volumes, and um, I read like half of the first one and i was gone from it <laughs> mm. oh and you can't you just can't remember which series it was it was um was it recent no no it was it was a really obscure series i can't remember it was it was qu quite some time ago okay so it was the spider-man trades that you ended up dumping because you weren't into it yeah yeah Okay. Wait until something uh, comic bound. Wait until something new really excites you and grabs you, or go back and enjoy an old favorite. Okay. And I can. He seems to be Canadian or British with that U in the favorite. <laughs> um but um <laughs> this is funny matthew says my biggest problem is that i have so much to read i want to read and i have a hard time deciding what to read i end up just taking a nap instead uh i haven't taken a nap in a while now i feel like i want one now that you just said that um so, um, do you feel like Spider-Man cacophony? I know there was Batman cacophony that was awful. That wasn't the series? No, that doesn't ring any bells. Okay. I'll have to, I'll, oh. I'll, I'll deep search my emails after this is done to try and find it. Okay, it's Streakazoid, okay. You're on your other account. Um, okay, Streak, thanks for tuning in. Um, Marcella says, I find it useful to not read too many books of the same type in a row. After Batman or Je Justice League, why not some vertigo or image? Probably something goofy or uplifting between serious or depressing stories. That's a good, oh, <laughs> Declan was just kidding. Okay, for Spider-Man cacophony because he knows that I hate Batman cacophony probably. Um, yeah, that's a good idea to mix it up, as Marcelo says. I'm just, I've just found my camera settings, so if you see me changing color. Uh... Oh, <laughs> yeah, you'll notice that 
I have the, I'm on a Mac and I just have the crappy old Mac camera and Lewis, who is a filmmaker, has the, has some type of fancy camera set up to his uh, computer and he was uh, throwing down with me earlier in the week of uh, how his picture is going to kick my ass and yeah, your picture is a lot better than mine. Yeah, I've just got my, um, my open wardrobe there as a background. <laughs> <laughs> but you are sharp. Uh, sharp as a tack, your picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like we have um, pretty much covered it. It's pretty much, I feel like it's not beat yourself up over it. Yeah. Give into it. Don't don't feel bad about it. Give yourself a break. Uh and go back to it when you're ready. Yeah, pretty much so. Yeah. Just um it's okay to do it. It's okay to to be honest, I I think having the breaks uh is much more beneficial because um it gives you that spark and enjoyment again when you get back into it. Uh because if you're and I I, I guess I would say uh, if we were to finish on a point, is that if you do enter a drought, not to continue buying stuff. Oh. Yeah, I think that would probably be an important point to to touch upon. Um, it's just, just to kind of give it all a break and just step outside of the hobby. Um, because who knows, it could it could even be the point where like um, it just doesn't appeal to you anymore. Like it happens with sports. Some guys love to play football and then one day they're just not into it anymore. Um, so don't continue investing money or spending money on something that there's no guarantee that you're going to return to it. Or if you are going to return to it, it could be several months down the line uh, and that money could be put used to better uh, elements in the meantime. That is a really good point. I'm glad you put that, slipped that in there. Um, Joe Chip also alternates between comic books and novels. I, I don't have, since I have, because of this channel and I, Omni Bros, I have nothing, no time to do anything but read comic books. And that's not a complaint um, because I l love reading comic books, but I used to read novels a lot. Um, I just don't have time anymore. I, I just read comic books full time and I haven't gotten tired of them uh, in a while. I think I went through a drought maybe back in the spring was the last time I felt that I wasn't into it. So, but I just took a break, like you said, and I came back and everything was fine. Um, so, any concluding comments? I, I feel like we uh, have covered this well. Um, no, I don't think so. I think, yeah, we've pretty much covered all aspects. Uh, and the chat has been good. Chat, do you have any, before we sign off, any questions, any, um, any ideas that we haven't thought of or any questions you want answered? Um, you want to know what kind of cameras and lenses that uh, Ugly McGregor is using? Hey, if you want to know that stuff, you can go and find out on my channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't you give your channel a plug? It's quite impressive, his channel. Uh, well, it is literally just uh, my channel name. At Ugly um, McGregor. Yeah. And if you have any interest in filmmaking, editing, or software tutorials, uh, my channel is filled with them. Now, I haven't seen anything you've made since the the last um, one that was so good that you sent it to me or you sent a lot of people to it with the uh, two people in the car. Oh, that was a short film from, from 2018. Yeah. Yeah, that actually was fantastic, I thought. Oh, it was really, really good. Um, have you done uh, anything um, since then that you you think I should uh, check out? Um, I recently uh, produced a documentary in partnership with uh, Panasonic Lumix. 
um, to showcase the camera that they released last year. Um, that's probably been like the main sort of narrative or like kind of uh, filmy thing I've done over mm-hmm. the last year. But because of lockdown and the pandemic, a lot of my uh, film plans kind of went out the window. Um, but that was kind of, we we sort of had like a window during the summer to kind of get it done when the cases were falling and the restrictions were starting to be lowered. Um, and yeah, we slotted that in. So I'll, I wonder if I could maybe I, I don't think live chat likes links being posted, does it? Um, try it anyway. Or I, uh, if it doesn't work for you, you can send it to me and I'll try since I, I think I can post links since I started the chat, but see if you can post it. Does it come up? Uh, not yet. Um, that's a good question. Declan says, what's going on in Europe with comic book stores, particularly DC Diamond UK? Uh, truthfully, I, I wouldn't have any idea. OK. Um, I try to um, remove myself from just like, I, I, I think one part of this hobby that I kind of got too deep into um, over the years was kind of getting involved with the creators and kind of the um, the behind the scenes aspect. And I think that uh, could maybe contribute to a drought uh, of getting too involved with the subject. Um, oh, so yeah. I've scaled it back a lot more now. So I'm just reading the books. In fact, I think I only follow one uh, comic book writer on Twitter now. Um, when you know in 2016 i was following each and every single one of them um so yeah so i i wouldn't have any clue about that sort of business side of things i uh i i don't follow twitter at all um for and so a lot of my news sources guys in the group and and youtube videos and things because i don't follow twitter at all uh I think it would upset me too much. Um, why don't you put your uh, link in the private chat here and let me see if I can post it through that. There you go. Oh, okay. Let's see. It came up clickable right there. Okay, wait. Whoop, I went to your channel. <laughs> I was trying to highlight it, not go to it. Oh, it looks great. Starts out nice. Okay, wait. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm left-handed and, I mean, I'm right-handed and no good with my left hand. So this is a little tricky. Okay. Let's see if I can do it here. Does that look right? Yep, that is correct. Okay, that's the uh, link to his latest video, which I accidentally clicked on. Clicked on, and it looks beautiful from the start. My um, um my LED light has just turned off. <laughs> it's run out of battery, so I don't know if I'm going to be a little bit dark now. Oh, okay. Well, we're. I think we're probably. Um. I think we have reached the organic and natural end of our yeah. subject. So it's probably uh, perfect timing. We've got your uh, your uh, video is uh, link is posted uh, under Omnidog's vault uh, right there at the very end. Cool, thank you. And uh, I've already got it up um, to look at right after this, so. Okay, well, yeah, uh, message me your thoughts then. <laughs> okay. I will. I'll watch it as soon as I go upstairs. Um, thank you to everybody that participated in the chat. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. This was uh, uh, kind of a different time for me to do something on a Sunday afternoon, and I appreciate everybody that uh, took the time to uh, watch us, and I appreciate Lewis coming on to talk about what happens when you hit a reading drought, because we all have that happen. And uh, it's a good idea 
to be prepared to know what to do when you hit that. Um, so uh, thank you, Lewis, and thank you to the chat. And uh, peace and love, peace and love. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye.